Hi everyone, this is Garezo here and welcome to workflow number 6. In this video I'll talk you through the whole process for the creation of this animation, which I'm calling the Busy Waiter. Alright, let's do it! This workflow is sponsored by Skillshare. If you're interested in animation, design or illustration, you've probably heard about Skillshare by now. So instead of saying how awesome that learning platform is, because it really is, I thought it'd be better to use this time to give you some suggestions from this ever-growing catalog of great classes. Well, if you ever doubted yourself if sometimes you think that idea will never come, or even if you question if you'll ever be as good as those amazing artists out there, don't worry, you're not alone, my friend. There are many classes that touch on that subject, but today I'd like to suggest the Creative Breakthrough class by Danielle Krisser. Danielle has a truly inspiring life story and in this course she shares 8 exercises that will definitely help you in your creative journey. One of the classes that I really enjoyed and even inspired one illustration I posted on my Instagram a while ago, which by the way I'm in the process of animating, is the Mastering Illustrator Tools and Techniques for Creating Geometric Grid Based Designs by Eugenia and Dominique Regini Brand. This class is just packed with many great Adobe Illustrator and design tips divided in 38 lessons. Make sure you check their other classes as well, as there are some true gems in there. And I'm just scratching the surface here. The first 1000 people to use the link on the description of this video will get a 2 month free trial of premium membership to keep exploring. After the trial you can become a member for less than $10 a month on the annual subscription. Before we start, don't forget you can download the project file for this tutorial and all the other tutorials and workflow videos on my website. Alright, back to our workflow here. So for this animation it always started with a simple idea and this quick sketch. After I was happy with the design, I started doing the rough pass straight away. I always start by defining what's driving the movement, what are the elements that are leading the action. And in this case, it's the body. But it could be the hands, the head, some object and so on. For me, animation is always about simplifying the movement as much as you can then working your way up, adding details until you have the final animation. So here I defined the main movement and started adding the rest of the elements in passes. Starting with the body, which is leading the legs, then the tray, which is another important secondary movement and is also leading one of the arms, and then the rest. After I was happy with this rough pass, I spent a bit of time exploring the design a bit more in Procreate, using one of the frames of the animation before moving to Adobe Animate to clean it up. If you're wondering why I didn't do the rough pass in Animate, well, there's no particular reason other than that I just like working on my iPad, especially during the initial stages. Don't worry too much about where you do it, focus on learning the process. It doesn't matter which software you're using. So after setting up the workspace, importing the rough pads and the initial design, I began pretty much repeating the same process, this time with extra care for the design and proportions, fixing and improving the animation as I went. So have you used a phone and skinning to make sure the lines all fall in the right place? and paying attention to the arcs to make sure the animation feels smooth. One nice tip to correct the arcs, especially for small objects, is to use the Edit Multiple Frames feature. That way you don't need to go frame by frame fixing it, you can tweak all frames in one place, and it makes it easier to visualize the arcs. That's especially helpful when you're working with symbols, because it can get messy if you're not. For the legs, I first did a pass with simple lines to make sure the movement was right before drawing the whole thing. That way it was easier to try some other poses and make adjustments. So 
So after I was happy with that, I drew the actual legs in another layer. Next, it was time for the tray. As with any element that don't change too much, I started by creating a symbol, and then frame by frame I adjusted the position and scale. Next, I did the arms, and the cloth on his arm and then the tray elements but this time, as I was too lazy to include these elements on the rough pass I animated them using the tray as a reference for the position Once again, using the edit multiple frames trick to correct the arcs. After finishing the first bottle, I duplicated the layer, created another symbol for the first glass, and replaced the symbol to save some work. I still had to go frame by frame adjusting it, especially because the tray is rotating, but at least it's a head start. Anything we can do to save some work is welcome. Then I did the same thing for the other glass, and also ended up adding some color to help visualize the rotation. Here I'm adding some animation to the symbols to account for the changes in perspective, but to be honest I didn't think it made too much of a difference as the movement is quite fast. I also animated the liquids inside the glass symbols using the same technique. Then same thing for the tie, always creating a symbol before starting, and then going frame by frame positioning and scaling the symbol. Next day, before starting, I decided to play a bit more with the colors, going for something less nightclub and more like a formal social event. With this new color palette, I started filling the shapes with color. One thing I like to do is to make the strokes transparent instead of deleting them. That way, if I want the strokes back for some reason, I just have to select them and change the opacity back, instead of having to recreate them on every frame. Now just adding the details on his suit. Here I'm filling the head and creating the hair, and as it's a symbol I only have to do it once, and as there's no animation inside the symbol I can have just one frame. Then I brought back the stroke with a lighter color on the intersection of the legs to make the movement more readable.
And finally I created the contact shadows. As always, every element on its separate layer. And that's it, we are done in Animate. Next, I went to After Effects to add the background and some finishing touches. And then I imported the FLA file. You just have to choose a folder where it's gonna save the Swift files, where your animation is gonna be, let's say, rendered. And then you get the same layer structure you had in Animate, each layer being in a separate Swift file. Next, I realized that the animation was playing a lot quicker here compared to Adobe Animate, even if it was showing me that it was playing at 24 frames per second there. Apparently, you can only trust the playback speed on a published animation, and that's annoying. So keep that in mind and publish your animation every now and then to be sure. Anyway, so here I'm cheating on the frame rate, changing it from 24 to 22 frames per second to slow the whole thing down. Next, I created some boxes to mark the position of the background characters, made them 3D layers and then I created and animated a 3D camera, trying to match the movement. I also realized I'd need to make the background loop longer to add more variation to it. So I made two loops of the main character for each background loop. Then I just kept duplicating and arranging the box for a while. I had a small break from this task to animate the reflections on the glasses, which I did by animating some shape layers and a combination of two linear wipe effects. To mask the reflections I ended up using the color of the glasses layer by applying some color key effects. For the bottle reflection, instead of using the same linear wipe effects, I ended up animating the reflection shape frame by frame, mostly because it's a curved surface. After that, I went back to the background elements positioning, and I also started creating the background characters using shape layers. Then I kept on tweaking their positions, making sure the last frame is the same as the first frame, so it loops seamlessly. And then I tried adding some blur to give the main character more prominence which I really liked. Then a bit more background rearranging. And now I start playing with the colors again. Yes, most of the time I change my mind about the colors quite a lot during the process. This just reminds me of this animation I did a while ago. Anyway, after playing with the hue saturation a bit, I decided to use the plugin Ray Dynamic Color to make the process of color palette experimentation easier. After setting up the whole thing, this plugin basically links all the colors to a palette comp where you can play with the different color combinations and swap palettes very quickly. And so I did. I also tried some coolers.co palettes until I got to the final colors. To finish it up, I added a white border that only covers the background to help increasing the depth sensation. After that, I even tested animating the background characters to see if that would add to the animation. But in the end it didn't help much as it gets lost in the blur and it's barely noticeable. For the final touches, I added an inner shadow layer style with some noise to the main character. And I also dragged the main comp into another comp to add a bit of chromatic aberration. I did that by duplicating the main comp twice, so I have three copies, and then applying a shift channels effect, isolating the colors in each layer, so red, green and blue, and then using a screen blending mode to merge them all together again. Next I applied an optics compensation effect to each layer with different settings so they get a little offset from each other, especially on the edges. And that's it, that's the final animation. I really hope you like this new format. I'm trying to find ways to speed up the production of these videos, so I can basically keep creating them. If something wasn't clear here, leave your questions in the comments section, and remember you can always get the project files on my store and dissect them. 
And if this video was helpful for you somehow, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel as that helps me a lot. Alright, thanks for watching and I see you next time.